I'm so glad that you're here joining me today. Thank you for coming back. We are continuing our conversation about the justice of God. One of his amazing attributes is that God is just. A couple of days ago, I shared with you my story of injustice in my life after being hit by a drunk driver and then suffering some malpractice and some sexual misconduct. And it just seemed like it was just ripple effects of injustice after injustice. I'll tell you a little bit more about that story later. Um, then yesterday we looked at how God God is just in his being. He's just in his judgments and he's just in his wrath. And so we were able to remember that Jesus is the one who took the wrath of God upon himself for the punishment of our sins. And now we can enter into a relationship with God where there is no condemnation for sin. We receive the righteousness of Christ now as we engage in a relationship with holy God. And I'm so, so grateful. And today we're going to talk about how God's justice is good. God's justice is good. We know that life isn't fair, right? But God's justice is fair and good. And in his goodness and in his fairness, God actually delays his ju justice so that many will be saved. That's, that's the nature of God, that yes, he's just in his judgment of sin, but he's also his other attributes. He's patient and kind and compassionate and loving. And so even in his justice, he, he delays, he's patient so that many people will be saved. I think about the story of Noah as an example. You know, the Bible tells us that in those days, there was great corruption on all the earth. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 says that the Lord saw the wickedness of man that was great on the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, can you imagine living in a society where, where every intention of every person's heart was constantly evil? That would have been so depressing. And the people God knew were deserving of immediate death. but God And God had determined that he was going to blot them out along with every living thing on the earth. God's justice had been violated. Um, but God didn't act immediately. Instead, he found one righteous man, Noah, and he invited him to build an ark to save his family and to save a pairs of animals across the world. And so Noah actually took 120 years to build this ark. But during the time that Noah was building, he was a preacher of righteousness. He was preaching to the people that judgment was coming, that they needed to repent. They needed to turn their hearts back to God. And people watched him as he built the ark. And they heard his stories and they heard his preaching. But you know what? They never repented. In the end, only Noah and seven other people, his wife and his sons and their wives, were able to get onto the ark and be saved. And they were saved. They were qualified by their faith in God's word to be saved from the destructive flood. It says in Genesis chapter 7, verse 5, that, that Noah did all that God commanded him to do. Now, God is patient in his just judgments so that all who repent will be saved. He's long-suffering. He's patient. 2 Peter 3, verse 9 says, the, slow, the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Now, those who believe in Jesus Christ have been saved because God delays his justice. Do you realize that? You and I, we have been saved. We have received salvation because God has delayed his punishment. I mean, he could have brought judgment in 1970. You know, how many would not have been saved then or even born by then? But I'm so grateful that the Lord has been patient towards me and towards those I love by delaying his justice. God's delayed justice is an opportunity for his mercy to be shown to many people. You know, I saw God's patience and mercy towards my father-in-law. You know, my, fa my father-in-law was given a long and healthy life. He had a, a clear, sharp mind and numerous opportunities to surrender his heart to the Lord Jesus. But he said no, and he made a very conscious choice in his life to live by his own terms. He willfully chose separation from God in this life, and God will honor his choice into death. 
And it's true for all of us. 2 Corinthians 6, 2 says, Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The point is that that God's delayed judgment is actually a mercy towards us. One of the ways that God displays his mercy, his character of mercy, is that he delays his judgments. He patiently provides opportunity for people to repent and to receive his mercy. Because one day we're all going to stand before him in judgment. 2 Corinthians 5.10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Sometimes we think, well, if we've received Christ as our Savior, we won't ever stand before God in judgment, but that's actually not true. You know, for the believer, for the Christian, Jesus will reward the believer with eternal life because Jesus has already judged our sin and disobedience on the cross. When he shed his blood for our sin, it was a once and for all. It was a one and done. And not only uh, will the good works of the believer remain for judgment, But also, this is going to be a time of receiving rewards for faithful service, for for obedience, for a transformed life, for loving people as Jesus loved them, for being instruments of his gospel good news in this world. This is called evaluative judgments. Evaluative judgments are rewards for believers based on how well they served and loved Christ as and, and, and engaged as his disciple in this life. Paul talks about this in his letter to Timothy. In 2 Timothy 4, verses 7 and 8, he said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Is that what you look forward to? The crown of righteousness. Because you finished the race well, you've kept the faith, you can stand before the Lord one day and receive the award of the fact that you you loved him and you served him and you persevered in faith through whatever circumstances life threw at you. Well, for the unbeliever, it's different. For the unbeliever, the unbeliever is, is that person who rejects the revelation of God And for that person, the judgment seat of Christ will be a time when sin and disobedience will be revealed. These are called punitive judgments. That means penalizing or disciplinary judgments. 2 Thessalonians talks about this in verse chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. It says, When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, They will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. And Revelation 20, 15 says, If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. That's sobering, isn't it? Because even as I read those verses, my heart is just breaking for those that I know who don't know Jesus yet. And I I want God to delay his justice for the sake of those who I'm still praying by his mercy will come to faith. But this is why the good news of the gospel is so good. We have a Savior who loves us and has come to rescue us from eternal destruction and from eternal separation from God. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So, what do we do? How can we respond? Well, first and foremost, we, we need to receive Jesus as our Savior. And that's, it's so easy to do, but it's so hard because the heart is hard. And so it's, it's hard for the heart, but it's just so simple. It's just accepting that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And then live in confidence of your forgiveness, that you are free from condemnation by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. The other thing we can do is to tell someone we love about the good news of the gospel. You know, today is the day of salvation. This is life and death stuff. And living in a global pandemic where more and more people are getting sick, this is life and death stuff. That today is the day of salvation for someone. So will you have the courage to tell someone? And then if someone has treated you unjustly, you can 
trust that the Lord will repay. Jeremiah 51, 56 says, For the Lord is a God of recompense. He will surely repay. I think we all probably have stories of being treated unjustly and we can just we can lay it at his feet and trust that he is the one he's the one who's omniscient he knows all things he's omnipresent he sees all things he knows the condition of a human heart he can is the only one who can repay justly you know just so you know i didn't end up suing my doctor um as long as justice was going to be served by someone's lawsuit because the lawyer told me that he had 16 cases on his desk against that same doctor, and I was the least scathed of those cases. Because I, I trusted that justice would be served in some way, I was just eager to move forward with my life. I walked away, and I, I didn't ever look back, except when I was preparing this message. And then I did a Google search and found him. I found that he is now 78 years old, still lives in the Sacramento area. In fact, his office is still in the exact location that it was 37 years ago. Uh, but I noticed that he has no practicing partners, so no one else is practicing with him anymore. He also is rated as only one star, and he had the lowest possible rating in every single category on the internet. I mean, sin has its consequences too, right, in life. Yes, there's judgment, but there's also just the consequences of sin that we live out in this life. And worst of all, I think, is that this, this doctor has had to live with himself all these years. Um, I feel sorry for him. But the last thing that we can do is we can revere God in obedience and worship. You know, God is God, so He is holy and righteous and just. But he is also faithful and merciful and loving. They're like two sides of the same coin that reflect his perfect character. You know, he is holy and righteous and just, but he's also faithful and merciful and loving. And he is always all of his attributes in perfect harmony all of the time. So that's why we can entrust ourselves to God because he is the one, the one, the capital O one, who judges justly, 1 Peter 2.23. What injustices do you need to trust to God today? Will you lay them at his feet and will you know that he knows everything and that in his proper timing, because he's patient and loving, long-suffering, but in his proper time, he will be the just and perfect judge. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for just knowing that you are the perfect, just judge and that we can trust you with everything. And we also thank you so much that we will never stand before you for punishment, that we can be secure that our punishment was taken on the back of Jesus on the cross. It is done. It is finished. And we stand before you now as children. We call you Abba Father. We are your beloved. And we are so grateful for this great privilege. But also we want to acknowledge that we also have a great responsibility to be bearers of good news to those who still have not received forgiveness. Would you please show us today who might, we might share this good news with? And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, again, thank you for joining me. I'm so glad that you join me each day as we talk about these really important things. And also, it's so comforting to just lift our hearts to the Lord and just think about who He is. It gives us so much stability and confidence in our lives, even in the midst of uncertain times. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about the happiness of God. Did you know that God is a happy God? So we're going to talk about his happiness, and I look forward to seeing you then.